Bobs and Shaw. <coughs> oh, I just think of animals. I think of like, you know, like um, Turner and Hooch. Oh, yeah. um, so Hobbs and Shaw for me is a bit like, oh, is it a cat and a rat? No, it's not. I wish. <laughs> that would be the exact same film, but it's a cat and it's a rat. <laughs> but it's not. It's The Rock it's and not. Jason Statham. It's not. So this is the ninth film in the Fast and Furious franchise and it's its first spin-off. So the Hobbs and Shaw of the title are not a cat and a rat. They are DSS agent Luke Hobbs, played by Dwayne Johnson, and mercenary Deckard Shaw, played by Jason Statham. And you don't really need to know anything about the previous films to understand who they are. They were both previously antagonists in the movies, but that's completely irrelevant now. Um, And they're forced to team team up to save the world because... Why not? And specifically (laughs) to stop a deadly programmable virus. And they keep saying programmable in the film and I have no idea what that means. But it's a programmable virus, of course, Uh, because it's been stolen by Deckard's estranged sister, Hattie, played by Vanessa Kirby, who is an MI6 agent who stole it from Ethion, who are a creepy tech cult who want to restart civilization, which is very standard villain activity. But it's also made her the primary target of Idris Elba's Brixton Law, who is a cyber genetically enhanced super soldier. Say that again. A cyber genetically enhanced super soldier. And there's a bit of explanation in as to who he is in this clip. You wanna tell me just what in the fresh turkey hell we're dealing with here? Long story. It's a ghost, it's supposed to be dead. A years ago, I put a bullet through his brain. Great. So we're being chased by the Terminator. I don't think he's gonna make it. Well, I don't think he can see over the steering wheel. Buckle up, fat boy, I'm gonna save your life again. I mean, that's the entire I'm sold. Film. I am so going to see it this weekend. I honestly... What the fresh turkey hell. That's my favourite thing The Rock has ever said, apart from, you're welcome. I don't know if I need to keep going, because that sums it up pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a moment halfway through this film where I just thought to myself, have we evolved to the next step of cinema? Because is this post, post, post modernism? Because Hobbs and Shaw barely qualifies as a movie. There's almost no narrative to speak of and very little downtime. It's just scenes, any scene with exposition in it, it's over pretty quickly. It's basically just a series of things that trigger the pleasure center in the brain, which is sort of what you want from a dumb action movie. Totally. I mean, you're not you're not really going actively to look for themes and, and narrative. You're going, you're buying your ticket because you want to see Dwayne Johnson take down a helicopter with his bare hands. Of course you do. So, yeah, and it's always been the approach of Fast and the Furious, but I feel like this one presses things a little bit further. It felt very meta to me in a way that was very haphazard, as if they were just kind of throwing things into the mix just in case it made somebody laugh or even just smile or have a moment of enjoyment. Uh, for example, there's... A lot of very odd ties to other completely unrelated films and it's sort of to do with who has a cameo in this. And there's also a very random film that is confirmed to be a part of the Fast and Furious universe. And you could say that it's just Fast and Furious feeling the pressure to become a kind of cinematic universe, but it could also just be that the people who are making these movies don't care anymore because it doesn't matter, just anything goes. Uh, And I feel like there is a lot of stuff to play around with here because the screenwriters, Chris Morgan and Drew Pierce, really know that Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham make for a pretty irresistible duo. It's as much an odd couple comedy as it is a high octane film. Mm. And only in the world of Fast and Furious would Jason Statham, and only compared to Dwayne Johnson, would Jason Statham be set up as the, the smaller, nimbler fighter which sounds, I mean, he could crush me with his palm. <laughs> and, his breath. Yeah, and the idea that he's like the little one is really, really played up in this film. And there is a lot of very immature humour, which I probably can't repeat on the radio. But it is it is a 12A, so they've reined it in a little bit. Yeah. But it's a lot of very silly, silly jokes. Right. And a lot of them insulting each other. And what I liked is that when they are insulting each other... It, it does these very tight close-ups of them almost looking down the camera. So it feels like Dwayne Johnson is calling me a bird song, mm-hmm. which was quite nice. And I think the thing that also really did sell it for me is the fact that it's directed by David Leach, who did 
John Wick, Atomic Blonde, Deadpool 2, which I love the way that he approaches action, specifically hand-to-hand combat, because he really lets the choreography breathe and you can actually see it and appreciate it. And I think it's interesting because a lot of the bigger action set pieces, like the vehicle stunts and the explosions, are done in a very traditional manner. So it is cutting a huge amount. So it's really hard to tell what's going on. Mm. So it's quite an interesting contrast. But I liked as well that the characters weren't being swallowed up by all this noise. I liked that Idris Elba had room to just be ridiculous because it is a ridiculous character. So why not be ridiculous with it? And I thought Vanessa Kirby had so much ferocity in her performance. And I think that was nice because it... it managed to overturn a few of the the gender tropes in this movie. It frustrated me that she was always referred to as the girl, even by her own brother. Mm -hmm. And they are meant to be brother and sister, even though there is like a huge age gap and there is no way that Jason Statham and Vanessa Kirby were children at the same time. But (laughs) that's Hollywood movies. It's a film. (laughs) It's not a documentary. I remember uh, reviewing the latter or... or someone reviewing the last Fast and Furious film when I was covering for Simon the last time uh, when it was out and went to watch it with my friend Nathan at like 11 o'clock at night screening with hardcore Fast and Furious fans. It was such a brilliant experience because you step into their world and you step out of that kind of, oh, I need to be impressed kind of thing that you can find yourself going into the cinema to want and look for. Sometimes you just need to go in there and leave everything at the door and let what's on screen just entertain you. It's about finding pleasure in individual images almost because as a whole, it's just complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. But there are just these little... I loved the bit where Idris Elba just says, engage the drones out of nowhere and two drones just appear (laughs) just out of nowhere. I loved that. I'm definitely going to see it. 